These past few years have brought their fair share of scientific revelations. With all the progress that has been made, it is no wonder some people may not be caught up on the latest news. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we will be taking a look at three recent findings that you may have missed. NASA finds 1,284 alien planets Thanks to the Kepler Space Telescope, scientists are more aware than ever of the exciting high prevalence of exoplanets, or planets outside of our solar system, in the galaxy. It is even possible that these planets outnumber stars. In 2016, data from the Kepler Space Telescope led to the largest sum of alien planets confirmed in a single study. The discovery totaled 1,284 newly found planets. This increased the number of known exoplanets by over 60%. This news is particularly interesting because identifying exoplanets helps us vet planets with the potential for life. Within the 1,284 new planets, nine of them are rocky, like Earth, and may contain life. The research team also validated 984 previously identified planets and suspect an additional 1,327 possible planets scouted by Kepler are likely planets as well. But these candidates require further confirmation. The team's work brings our known exoplanet count to 3,200, 2,235 of which have been discovered by Kepler. The Kepler data suggests that roughly 25% of main-sequence stars in our galaxy possess an Earth-sized planet in their habitable zones, which is the area that allows for liquid water on a planet's surface. Since there are 70 billion main-sequence stars in our galaxy, there are potentially tens of billions of habitable Earth-like exoplanets waiting to be observed. With the new research on the Kepler data, Scientists have observed 21 of these habitable zone planets. Plus, the data reveals that small, rocky planets like Earth are likely the most abundant planet type in our galaxy. The Kepler mission began in March 2009, with $600 million of funding. Kepler's job is to vet the galaxy for Earth-like planets. It discovers planets by observing changes in brightness caused by planets transiting their stars. The first mission, K-1, lasted four years, during which time Kepler was able to monitor an impressive 150,000 stars. This mission came to a stop in May 2013, when one of the instrument's reaction wheels failed, costing Kepler its precision. Until that point, Kepler had succeeded in identifying over 4,000 possible planets. These planet candidates were previously validated on the ground with the help of other instruments, but the 2016 team used a faster and more effective statistical approach. Using computer simulations, researchers tested the probabilities that the potential planets were actually other celestial objects. Candidates with over a 99% chance of being genuine exoplanets were deemed valid. Researchers will continue to examine more of the K-1 mission's data. A K-2 mission, with a stabilized Kepler, began in 2014. In 2018, NASA's Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite began operating a similar mission. Not only is the statistical validation method useful for confirming exoplanets, it may also help identify the planets with the greatest capacities for life. Scientists plan to analyze light changes in stars as they are faced with different planetary atmospheres, which allow them to detect water. Thanks to Kepler, we now know that habitable planets are more common than we thought, boosting our hopes that there is other life out there in our galaxy. Earliest inhabitants of the Amazon created thousands of artificial forest islands. Communities in the Amazon left their mark on the landscape 8,000 years earlier than previously thought. A 2020 study from the University of Bern suggested that 10,850 years ago, people inhabiting the Lanos de Moxos region of North Bolivia altered the landscape, which ultimately led to the formation of 4,700 forest islands of anthropogenic origin. 
These islands seemed to rest upon large mounds of food waste. These mounds were, of course, rich in nutrients, which made them the perfect site for thriving forests in the middle of an often flooded savanna. Researchers believe that communities in Lanos de Moxos were able to cultivate manioc and squash. The idea that this domestication inspired the islands is supported by the consistently circle-shaped tree formations, which are unlikely to occur naturally. The raised islands would help communities circumvent the seasonal flooding that threatens crops. To confirm the artificial tree island theory, researchers mapped the islands using remote sensing. 6,643 islands were mapped, but only 4,700 remain today. The team conducted excavations at 81 sites and analyzed dozens of radiocarbon dates and phytolith samples. Phytoliths are microscopic silica structures from plants that are often preserved in tropical forests. These tests confirmed the presence of domesticated plants in the region. The idea that the southwest Amazon was a hub for early plant domestication has been popular among the scientific community because manioc and squash are genetically like the wild plants of the area. It is difficult for researchers to find evidence of plant domestication in places like the Amazon, where the climate affects organic materials. However, with the new study, we finally have confirmation that the southwest Amazon was indeed one of the earliest sites of plant domestication. Previously, only four areas were identified as ancient plant domestication hubs. Now, scientists must add a fifth location to that list. A neutron star is still emitting X-rays three years after collision. On August 17, 2017, astrophysicists observed a collision between two neutron stars. The merger, called GW170817, was the first to be directly observed. GW178017 was detected by the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory and seen as a massive burst of light. Three ground-based gravitational wave observatories were able to pinpoint the exact location of the merger, which occurred 130 million light-years away from Earth. Viewing this merger certainly excited astrophysicists, but it is the aftermath of the collision that truly attracts scientific curiosity. Scientists expected the X-ray radiation to fade in a short time. The radiation was still detectable by NASA's X-ray observatory 1,000 days later. This radiation seemed to be dimming during the six months following the collision, but it never disappeared as predicted. Since models suggested that the X-rays would vanish, scientists have no clue what to expect going forward. Scientists have previously recorded only two neutron star collisions, which forces them to rely on models to forecast the outcome. The models originally lined up with what was observed in GW170817. The aftermath quickly deviated from expectations. It is known that after such collisions, a jet of gamma rays and a burst of gas is released. This is called a kilonova, but it is supposed to be undetectable within weeks. Therefore, astrophysicists believed they were looking at jet material that would soon fade. Since the material was still glowing as of December 2020, researchers had to look for alternative explanations. Scientists measured the mass of the two neutron stars before the merger and then the mass of the leftovers. Surprisingly, the amount of remaining mass was higher than the mass of the largest neutron star ever discovered but lower than the mass of the smallest known black hole. This left researchers with no easy answer, but now the presence of lingering X-ray radiation rules out a black hole. Astrophysicist Eleonora Troja believes that radio emissions might join the radiation in the near future, which means that scientists are observing for the first time the afterglow of a kilonova, not the collision itself. Troja has also suggested that a lack of future radio emissions could signal to scientists that the collision produced a massive neutron star, which would also be a first for researchers to observe. No matter the result, GW170817 
has given scientists the opportunity to learn more about the behavior of neutron stars. It is likely that current ideas about these collisions will change for good. According to Troja, we have a beautiful problem. No matter what the solution is, it's going to be exciting, which is a great problem to have in astrophysics. But what do you make of these recent discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.